we can look at digestive support. I've talked about it before. You may or may not be able to handle acid. It's sometimes people that have gut issues and gut inflammations. You'd be surprised. I've been doing this for a long time and seen thousands and thousands of patients. Some patients with gut inflammation actually do decent with some level of acid. Now, how can you test this? You can just start with a, a teaspoon or even a half a teaspoon of a little bit of um, apple cider vinegar or lemon juice. and Just put it in like an ounce or two of water, like a shot glass worth, and just shoot it before your meal. You may find that you do really well with it. You may find that it irritates your gut. If it irritates your gut, it's a no-go for you. You can take some baking soda to kind of like put out the, uh, the fire, so to speak, and then eat your meal and just try to focus more on enzymes and healing nutrients besides that. Again, if you have an active ulcer, don't even try it. But, you know, out of the gates, it's always worth giving it a little acid challenge, very small amount. Usually it's dose dependent, right? So more, the more sensitive you are, the more acid you have, the, the greater your negative reaction will be if you're sensitive to it. So it's always good to test it just because then you know, and then you can kind of check that off your list. You'd be surprised coming, you know, seeing thousands of patients, you try different things, people come to you, they report things, they test things, and you'd be surprised how people sometimes do well. And partly is because sometimes the acid or irritation or inflammation that they're dealing with is more from the food rotting and that inflammation can actually be greater than the little bit of acidity that you get at the beginning of a meal. So you can test it with some apple cider vinegar, which is acetic acid or some lemon or lime juice, which is uh, citric acid. You can test that. You can also use some bitters as well. If, if someone's even more sensitive, we may just do some bitters, whether it's ginger, uh, gentian, chamomile. These are nice, gentle bitters. And then we can focus on really good healing nutrients as well. So this is where I'm going to be focusing on ginger tea, aloe juice, and in my product line, we use a product called GI Restore, which has some good foundational nutrients. It's got the glutamine to help with the, the, the gastric tissue. It's got the aloe. It's got the DGL licorice, which is great. It's got some zinc in there. Zinc is shown to help with gut permeability and leaky gut, which is awesome. Helps bring those enterocytes back together. Um, we also have some okra in there. Okra is wonderful. It's very healing. Vitamin U in there. You can also do things like vitamin A, like in cod liver oil. These are really good, excellent for the gut lining. Things like ginger and manuka honey can also be wonderful for the gut lining as well. What if it burns at the colon after taking apple cider vinegar? Um, well, that's be weird because, I mean, for all that to go from your mouth to your stomach, it would take a while to kind of get to the colon. It, it would take a little bit of time because it's got to go through 20 – what, 23, 24 feet of the small intestine before it gets to the colon. So it would take a while. So I'm not sure how you would know that per se, because there'd be food in your intestinal tract. And so it would take time for it to move its way through. So I'm not sure that you would know the apple cider vinegar is doing it unless you've kind of tested it multiple times, multiple times, multiple times. Yeah, when I say food is rotting, it means your food is sitting inside of your stomach and it's fermenting, it's rancidifying, it's putrefying, it's essentially rotting in your stomach because you don't have enough acid and enzymes Therefore, you start to get bloaty. You start to get gassy. You may see at the other end the next day or so undigested food part particulate. You may really have a lot of foul-smelling flatulence, which is usually a sign of methane overgrowth. You may have a lot of burping as well. So if you see that more in the stomach, you're going to get more burping. If you see it more in the small intestine, you're going to get more flatulence. That's kind of how you know where it may not be doing the best thing.